In this video we are going to talk about 8 scary time travel movie. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to Adify for future updates. The idea of time travel is amusing by nature. It enables fictional characters to travel to the past to learn more about our past or to the future to learn more about where society and the world are headed. Additionally, it enables stoner losers to falsify their history homework or causes situations where the general public demands hoverboards despite the fact that they would be ludicrously dangerous. Nevertheless, here are 8 films that were equally spooky and unsteady. Number 8. Star Trek – First Contact The Enterprise crew has a moment of panic when they encounter an other version of Earth that the synthetic Nazis, the Borg, have incorporated into their collective hive mind of physical horror, but the time travel itself isn't what makes the eighth Star Trek movie disturbing. Instead, the idea that this is essentially a zombie movie situated in space accounts for most of the horrific moments. On the surface, that seems like a terribly bad concept, yet First Contact is among the more enjoyable flicks in the largely lackluster Next Generation series. Because of the B-plot that depicts the titular first encounter between humans and Vulcans, the horror components and their contrast with the generally positive thread of discovery and adventure are mostly to blame. But basically, the Borg are incredibly terrifying. The scenes that take place on board the ship almost religiously adhere to the undead outbreak formula, with Captain Picard, Patrick Stewart, killing crew members who show signs of infection before they fully transform. Even Alfred Woodard's portrayal of audience surrogate Lily Sloan calls the Borg cybernetic zombies although the sci-fi villain's method of conversion entails shooting devices into your neck that eventually force mechanical parts to erupt from your flesh, the analogy is still quite accurate, and we'd like Picard to shoot us as well. Number 7. The Jacket, 2005. In The Jacket, the conditions and method used to travel across time are more terrifying than the actual act of doing so. That would entail having asylum physicians inject you with an absurd concoction of medications, strap you to a chair, and keep you there for extended periods of time until you go insane. We're not precisely clear how this technique generates time travel, and we're much less certain about its therapeutic implications. However, we're neither medical professionals nor Doc Brown. Jack, Adrian Brody, the patient, travels 15 years into the future and makes friends with Jackie, Kira Knightley a lady he assisted in the now when she was a young child. The claustrophobic part of us questions whether the time spent waiting to travel back in time while confined to a dark drawer, unable to move, and drugged to the point of insanity, is really worth it, even though everything turns out just great for everyone in the end. Number 6. Army of Darkness. Even though the second installment of Sam Raimi's The Evil Dead shifts completely to comedy by the time protagonist Ash Williams, Bruce Campbell, kills his first deadite, we're including it since it still has a strong sense of horror throughout. And we're not just talking about the ones that let Ash and his fantastic automobile and the demonic tree from the second movie fly through the time vortex. Army of Darkness sends the unfortunate demon fighter through space and time to medieval England, where he must once more locate the Necronomicon Ex Mortis and drive out the ancient evil that afflicted him there. He has to battle multiple tiny versions of himself along the way, as well as one fully grown version that emerges from his body after a mini ash jumps down his throat. Number 5. Time After Time. In this 1979 movie, written and directed by Nicholas Meyer, Star Trek VI, The Undiscovered Country, H.G. Wells, played by Malcolm McDowell, uses a time machine to track down Jack the Ripper, David Warner, in modern-day San Francisco. This script escalates the immediate stakes by letting one of history's most notorious killers loose in the present. Star Trek IV, The Voyage Home appears to be a template for this one, with its premise of temporally displaced travelers enjoying more or less a romp through the city by the bay. Warner pulls off some eerie moments as he remarks on the perilous new era he's visited, even if it mostly stays lighthearted and avoids going into slasher territory. The Ripper tells a terrified Wells that the world has caught up with me and surpassed me while displaying the onslaught of constant violence on American television. I was a freak 90 years ago. Right now, I'm a novice. And if all that talking and sitting around isn't horrifying or gory enough for you, we're confident that the impending ABC television series adaption will make up for it. Then, most likely, it will use a very sharp, very bloody knife to cut that slack. Number 4. Source Code 
Similar to first contact, the circumstances more than the travel itself are what makes Source Code by Duncan Jones, Warcraft, Moon, scary. Coulter Stevens, played by Jake Gyllenhaal, is an army pilot who quantum leaps into Sean Fentress, a teacher who had perished in a terrorist attack on a train in order to stop a more significant strike on Chicago. Despite the convoluted plot, Stevens ultimately decides he wants to stop the initial disaster and save everyone on board, notably Fentress traveling companion Christina, Michelle Monaghan, who is particularly attractive. He is only there to relive his host body's final eight minutes of life in order to identify the bomber and stop an impending strike, according to his Air Force handlers, who argue that doing otherwise would be useless given that everyone in the reality he is experiencing has already passed away. When Stevens successfully alters the past at the end of the film, it becomes even more complicated. However, that won't happen unless we learn two things. The first is that the Quantum Leap comparison is completely intentional because Stevens' father is voiced by Scott Bakula, who also appeared in that TV show. The series hero Sam Beckett's catchphrase, oh boy, was stated by him, but that's beside the point. The second, more important revelation is that, despite Steven's perspective, which depicts him traveling through time in a metal capsule, he is really nothing more than a torso and a head within a box that are connected to life support. Two months prior to the beginning of the film, he died in Afghanistan, but the Air Force is keeping him alive since his biology is enough like Fentress to allow him to travel across time. As different from Doctor Who's wonderfully entertaining TARDIS as a time travel movie is going to get, it is a genuinely unsettling vision. Number 3. Lost in Space. An early example of the gritty remake is the 1998 film adaptation of the corny 1960s sci-fi series about the Robinsons, a family that is, well, it's right there in the title. While the original was light-hearted, silly, and even campier than its rival, Star Trek, the film is still mostly enjoyable despite having a plot in which the typically ineffective Dr. Smith, Gary Oldman, transforms into a huge spider monster and kills the majority of the other characters before preparing to unleash his brood on Earth. But that is in a different, distant timeline. Due to an older Will Robinson, Jack Johnson, Jared Harris, trying to construct a time machine to stop his family's fateful trip from ever occurring and thereby save his mother, father, sisters, and perhaps even Matt LeBlanc's character if there is time, from their painful, fatal encounters with cosmic calissery, our heroes discover a planet covered in portals and bubbles. It's the wicked, future Dr. Smith who, for the most part, is just a strange figure in a cloak, creeping around like a Star Wars villain, but at the end, he whips it off to expose an oddly long neck, several extra limbs, and a pulsing, ripe egg sac that makes this time travel story so terrifying. It's as if Spider Smith were the bricks in a Lego set called Your Nightmares, which was recently launched. Number 2. Predestination. Predestination is a really strange movie based on the short story All You Zombies by Robert Heinlein, Starship Troopers. At first glance, the movie seems to have six major characters, a crazy bomber, a time agent posing as a bartender, his boss, a man, a woman, and a baby. However, by the end, viewers find out that there are actually only two. This is due to the fact that the bomber, the time traveler, and the man, woman, and infant are all different incarnations of the same person throughout their incredibly complicated lives. The phrase predestination paradox refers to a situation in which time travelers strive to alter previous events only to discover that their efforts actually set those events in motion in the first place. So, compared to the Terminator, this has significantly more biology and far fewer robots. Furthermore, according to predestination and the source material it draws from, if you travel through time and mate with your former, opposite gender self, you will be the offspring of that union. Since intersex disorders are rather uncommon and time travel is, as far as we know, impossible, we can't test that theory. But since that creates for some compelling drama, we'll give the individual tale and film writers the benefit of the doubt. Not all viewers will find this to be frightening, similar to a few other titles on our list. A movie about a character who discovers that every minute of their existence has and must happen in accordance with a specific plan is a rather scary premise, yet you like the idea that you control your own destiny. Number 1. Primer. The hyperscientific film Primer, written, directed, edited, scored, and starring Shane Carruth, depicts two scientists who are working to find a way to make an object lighter accidentally discovering a time travel apparatus. Although that endeavor is amazing in and of itself, we think making the error of creating a temporal manipulation field isn't too bad. 
However, there is a catch, because interfering with the continuum always has one. Objects inside the box form a field that causes them to move to moments when the field is active. In other words, if you switch on the device at noon, go in at 6 in the evening, and wait 6 hours, you will come out at noon. To fully comprehend the procedure, we needed aids like this chart, but we believe we do so today. However, the primary point is that longer excursions are more challenging because you have to wait in the box for the entire trip. The fact that Primer is a purposefully cryptic and obscure film further heightens the dread of its implications. In the conclusion, one of the scientists becomes a little nefarious and begins building a box the size of a building. Although we don't know what he intends to do with it, the fact that he is obviously up to no good and that he has a lot of alternatives makes it disturbing. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.